Hey everyone, today I'm out on location with Sony Australia and I have my hands on the Sony A93. Today we're going to be seeing what it's capable of for both photo and video. So we're not doing any portrait photo shoot today. I've been sharing wildlife photography on my channel and today we're going to be doing sports photography. This is an extremely exciting camera because it features a global shutter. What that means is unlike a typical sensor which captures the image line by line, a global shutter captures every single pixel at the same time. The most important advantage of a global shutter is it eliminates rolling shutter. This means you won't see flickering lights or banding in your photos, fast moving subjects won't be distorted, and you have the ability to flash sync at any shutter speed. This makes the A93 an exceptionally good camera for sports and wildlife photography, but don't click away if you don't do this kind of photography. Something I mention in all my reviews of high-end cameras is features that are introduced in these cameras will eventually trickle down into more prosumer and consumer cameras. So it's good to know about how these cameras work to know what to potentially expect from future camera releases at different price points. It's like 38 degrees Celsius today, FYI. Who's gonna survive, me or the camera? <laughs> Even though Sony Australia put on this event for us and invited me, this video is not sponsored. They don't review my video before I post it, they don't tell me what to say, and I, as always, will be sharing all my opinions on the A93 in today's video, both good and bad. You don't even want to know how many photos I'm taking right now. <laughs> So let's start with the autofocus. It looks like they have replaced AF tracking sensitivity with AF level for crossing. I personally think this is a good change as it makes it more obvious what this setting does. You can choose from one to five how sensitive the autofocus is when a subject crosses in front of your camera. If you remember watching my A7R5 review video where this AI autofocus was first introduced, I was still experiencing some shifting happening as someone walks in front of the frame in locked on where that shouldn't be happening. This did not happen at all in the A93. We tried to get it to shift focus and it would just stay absolutely fixed on the subject, which is great to see. There is now a new AF track for speed change setting, which gives you three options depending if you have a subject that suddenly starts moving or is moving at a steady pace. Finally, the A93 has the same subject recognition options, which you would have seen in the A7R5, where you can fine tune focusing settings for the different subjects the camera is able to recognize. So let's take a look at some of the photos I took and dive into autofocus accuracy and image quality. You might also notice I have the 300mm f2.8 GM lens, so I will also share my first impressions and thoughts on this lens as well. This camera body is absolutely fantastic to shoot with. I cannot talk more highly about the experience of using an A93 for photography on location. I'm going to be shooting at 60 frames a second to start off with. I want to see the coffee shakes. <laughs> I want to see if we can get any distortion in the golf <laughs> I want to see if we can get any distortion in the golf club as they swim. I'm using the C5 shortcut to get 120 FPS for this one. Oops, <laughs> there goes 500 gigs. It's pretty mind-blowing in itself to think about the fact that it can capture up to 120 photos per second and then you flick through them in post and the majority of those photos are completely in focus. Having a camera body like this removes most pain points of photographing in fast-paced environments. I have never done sports photography professionally and I felt like I could rely completely on this camera body to get the shots I needed. It locks onto subjects with ease and keeps track of them even if there is a lot of erratic movement in the frame. I'm really impressed with the autofocus accuracy of some of these skateboard photos. I was waiting for the moments they would jump up near me, which in real life happens in a split second. But in the camera, I have hundreds of photos of that moment and focus is super sticky on their face. I have my finger on the 120 FPS shortcut, basically pressing it anytime they jump up. When I heard about this global shutter, I'm not sure why, but I was a little worried about what the image quality would look like. That was so cool, I love that, but we're gonna head down to the Ironman now because they've got some a little bit of surfing going on. Yee. I'm back on the 70 to 200. We've got some surfers, which I'm so excited to take photos of. Hopefully 70 to 200 is enough juice. I don't know, might have to jump in. 
If you're watching this video or my channel, you likely work with people in some way, whether it's portraits, events, or weddings. The A92 is an extremely popular camera for wedding photographers due to its shooting speed and megapixel count. So will the A93 be what the wedding photographers upgrade to? Is the image quality up to par? After taking a look at all my files, the A93 produces photos with great image quality. There is nothing out of the ordinary in these files. We have clean looking photos, they are sharp with lots of details and good overall colors. You've seen quite a lot of the photos I've taken so far at 100% crop, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. The A93 does have a base ISO of 250, which might be a concern to some photographers. However, your fastest shutter speed is not 1 over 8,000 in this camera, it is 1 over 80,000. Just getting some shots here of the Iron Man and women running into the ocean. It does such a fantastic job tracking them, it's very satisfying. Since this camera is aimed at sports and wildlife photographers as an example, it is actually rare to shoot at a base ISO because you need to work with fast shutter speeds. If you take the golf photos I took for example, a shutter speed of 1 over 2500 is not fast enough to freeze the extremely fast motion. Even in my portrait shoots, you see me using higher ISOs and fast shutter speeds, especially on longer lenses to avoid motion blur. I'm pretty sure I've taken more photos already in like 10 minutes than I have at a whole portrait session. I'm getting a shot of just like her feet in the ball so we can see the sand movement as she hits it. I gotta bump up my ISO quite high so I can get a fast enough shutter to capture that movement to be still. And I'll do a couple in 60 FPS and 120 FPS. The base ISO of 250 is also extremely clean and I do have a low light test to share with you at the end of this video with photos at every single ISO. Speaking of a shutter speed of 1 over 80,000, I find it interesting that you can only achieve this fastest shutter speed if you're shooting in an aperture of f1.8 and above. At f1.2, 1.4, 1.6, the A93 caps out at a shutter speed of 1 over 16,000. By the way, I use the 300mm f2.8 GM lens quite a lot in this spot with the swimmers. This lens is extremely sharp, even when shooting wide open, which is what I'm doing here. The images it produces are so crispy. I just love the way the water looks when it's frozen in some of these shots. The background to foreground separation is super creamy as well. I can see this being such a beautiful lens for portraits. I have done a portrait session with the GM 400mm f2.8 on my channel before if you're curious to see how portraits would turn out. Even though it looks very large, this 300mm is a surprisingly easy lens to use. The weight of the lens is towards the mount, so it feels super balanced when doing photo or video. It weighs 1.4 kilos. I also found it very fast to focus. I made sure to capture sequences of the swimmers running towards the lens and found it had no problems capturing tack sharp images. The A93 weighs 702 grams, which is lighter than the A1 at 737 grams. The body also has some features I'm really happy with. First is the flip and tilt screen. This is a must for me on any new Sony camera body going forward, and I'm looking at you, A75. <laughs> the left dial has two layers, one to quickly shift between focus modes and the other to switch between drive modes. I had my drive mode set to shoot between 5, 15, 30, and 60 photos per second. For some reason, I noticed in high plus you can set it to any FPS up to 120, but low to high, you can only set it to max 30 FPS. So if you want to set your drive mode dial to 15, 30, 60, 120 FPS, you can't actually do that. And I'm not too sure if there's a reason why. Anyway, it is worth mentioning the A93 does not have a mechanical shutter since it has a global sensor and it shoots completely blackout free. The EVF is also extremely nice to use, which is so important on a camera like this. The LCD is the same one as the one found on the A7R. Five. Sony have reworked the grip a bit. It is very comfortable to hold for long periods of time. I assume they did that so they could fit this brand new shortcut for Sony here at the front, the C5 button. This rests right under your middle finger and when you press it, I've set it to enable 120 FPS shooting. You definitely want this setting of being able to shoot at 120 FPS on a shortcut because if you don't, you're going to come home with way too many photos and probably fill up your memory card before the end of the shoot. It's always time for a 35 Millimeter. Always. 
<laughs> the A93 has dual card slots where both slots can take CF Express A or SD. To make the most of shooting speeds, you definitely want to be using Express cards. I have been using 1TB CF Express Type A cards with it and the camera works really smoothly and I'm never slowed down with the buffer. It only takes a couple of seconds to clear. Oh, amazing! I also had the chance to test out the A93 with flash both in a studio setting and with a Sony on camera flash. In the studio, I was able to capture synced photos at numerous shutter speeds all the way up to 1 over 16,000 with no issues. Oh, cool! <gasps> yeah! <laughs> Can you do like a high one? Being able to use flash at these high shutter speeds is going to be very handy for photographers who use lighting outdoors and who need to freeze fast movement in these scenarios. I personally would love this for wedding photography where I often use on-camera flash for a big portion of the day, usually during the reception, which includes a dance floor with fast movement. Before we move on to video, I also want to talk about a brand new feature introduced with the A93 called pre-capture. Just like 120fps, I have pre-capture set to my AEL button as a shortcut because having this on at all times will again very quickly fill up your memory cards. When you have this on, it will capture images while you're half pressing your shutter or the trigger you choose. Once you press your shutter fully, it will save a specified amount of those pre-captured images which you can set in the menu. So if you set it to one second, it will save 120 photos from before you pressed your shutter. A good example of this is when I was taking photos of this dragonfly where my reaction speed is much slower than the dragonfly. So I don't miss the moment it flies out of the frame, I turned on pre-capture which was able to shoot these images that I otherwise would have missed on any other camera. The pre-capture photos are full raw files just like your normally captured photos. Let's move on to video. One of the first things I noticed is that Sony have made some huge improvements to IBIS and SteadyShot. I'm getting some video shots of these people running in and out of the water on the 300mm. Handheld, talking. Man, the IBIS is like strong. Whoa. Okay, I'm getting some handheld shots at 300mm, tracking these guys running up and down. It feels really smooth, like IBIS feels solid. This is what I needed in Antarctica, instead I had to stabilize all my footage. The lens also has optical steady shot, which would have been helping. But overall, these shots are super smooth. Even when there is movement in the video, it looks very natural and cinematic. Dan and I captured some footage on a different day with the 24mm f1.4 GM. These are all handheld and we made sure to move around as much as possible so you can take a good look at the movement. These are all the options we have. In up to 60 FPS you can have it off, standard steady shot which is IBIS and doesn't cause a crop, active steady shot with a slight crop and dynamic active which induces a significant crop. In up to 120 FPS you can only choose between off and standard steady shot. The A93 films in up to 4K, 422 10-bit and up to 120 FPS in full frame in every file format with no crop and full autofocus. So there are basically no restrictions when it comes to video, which is really good to see. While the A93 is aimed at still shooters, the video features of this global shutter camera makes this an extremely strong camera for videographers as well. However, I did say almost no restrictions. Some that I found are external recording in 4K cannot be used with S-Log and only up to 60p. External S-Log only works in 1080p. It also heats up pretty quickly. It shut down from being too hot after 20 minutes of 100fps recording in 4K. In 60fps though, I was able to endlessly film with no temperature warnings. I also have to say, I'm not a big fan of Sony moving S-Log out of the picture profiles menu, which makes switching between S-Log and other profiles so cumbersome. Last but not least, we have our low light model, Dan, and I took these photos at every single ISO available in this camera for you to have a look at. These are the JPEGs straight out of camera with noise reduction set to normal in camera. It also has an option for composite raw shooting where it stacks several high ISO images to reduce noise in the final composite. This doesn't happen in camera though, you have to stack the images on a computer. That is all I have for today's video shooting with the A93 in 38 degrees Celsius here in Sydney. I really hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think of the photos and if you want to see more videos and photo shoots like this from me, let me know. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.